Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad and welcome back to Space Engineers. Today I'm going to show you how to create blueprints and also a fairly easy way to use the projector. It's not as complicated as it may seem and I'm going to show you how to do that now. First of all, creating a blueprint. Once you've boarded the ship that we want to take the blueprint of, go into the K menu and find info at the top of the screen. If we click on info, to the right hand side you can see down here grid name now that might say static grid or small grid or something what you really need to do is to name that something that's appropriate to the ship or the station or whatever it may be that you're working on so this is the the first miner that i built in one of the tutorials so that's the name that i gave it i'm going to keep it as that and quit out of that the next thing we'll need to do is to jump off the ship and while we're looking at it you just simply press Control b now control B will bring up the blueprints window and from here you can see at the top of the list there it should say whatever the name is that you just gave your ship. So that's a very simple way of creating a blueprint. So why do we create blueprints? Well in case our ship gets damaged or destroyed or we go to a different server or we start a new game and we want to reuse the ship that we are so happy with. In order to use the blueprint we need to have a projector set up. Now the most common way that people will use to do a small grid projection is to start with a landing gear, attach a battery to that and attach a projector to it. But I want to show you a slightly different way of doing that. Now I am in creative mode here just to speed the tutorial up a little bit. So I'm going to remove a block here and I want to insert a advanced rotor. So in the G menu I'm going to search for rotor. I'm going to find the advanced rotor and drop that down to number five and then the advanced rotor I'm going to place down in that space where I just took that block. Now by default the large grid advanced rotor will have a large head but what we can do is remove the head and replace it with a small grid head. So let's do that by going to control panel we'll find our rotor advanced rotor if we scroll down we can say add small head now when we go back we'll see there's actually a small head in place and I need to weld that up. Now the benefits of this is that we have a rotor attached to a large grid base and because it's attached it has power to it and because we've added a small head we can place small blocks on the top. And whatever is attached to these blocks will also receive power. So I've started by placing half a dozen blocks. Next thing I need to do is to add the projector. So if we go back into G and search for proj, there's our projector. I'll drop that down into number six. And I'm just going to show you what this projector looks like. It's not easy to see what's going on, but when you first bring in the projector, it's normally orientated the correct way to what you're facing. So you can see here that it, there's a cross on the top of the projector with a white dot in the middle. Now that indicates the top of the projector. I'm going to place it down. Around the sides you can see there is no line. You can see the cross going across the top there. And here there is no line. Around this side no line. This side no line. But on this side there is a line. Now I really wish they had just done a different design for this. It would make it so much easier. But that line there indicates the front of the projector. So effectively the beam, if you like, will be coming out of the front this way. The next step we need to do is to be able to control the projector easily. So I'm going to use a control seat that I'm going to place just here so I can see what's going on while I'm making adjustments. So back in the G menu, I'm going to search for control seat. I'm going to drop that into number seven. Now we're going to hop into the seat and set up the projector. So on the bottom of the screen there you can see our hot bar is completely blank because that's the hot bar for the seat that we're sitting in. Now what I want to do is to set up the controls for the projector in these buttons. So to do that we need to use the G menu and in the G menu we'll look for the projector. If I right click on this it gives me the options that we can choose and now we can see we can toggle it on and off and so on but the things we're interested in are these ones here increasing the horizontal offset, the vertical, forward, pitch, your roll, and so on. Now all I'm going to do is we don't need to worry about which one is which, let's just take them in order. So I'm going to left click in sequence on each of these. Starting with that one, you can see that's gone into number one. Right click, next one, left click. 
right, next one, left click, and so on. So there are the six main controls for sliding the blueprint around. Now on the next level of hotbar, we're on one at the minute. I'm going to change to the second row of hotbar options, so control and two to do that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other controls that we need. So it's the right button, left button, right, and then left, and so on, all the way down. Now the reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to deal with this menu. Let me just show you. You can use the slider to, to change these things, but it obscures your view and it does make it a bit harder to work with. So we've bypassed all of that by setting up these buttons in the hotbar. Now, before we load up a projection, it's important to remember that if you're using the Nanobots build and repair system or any of those automated building mods, you need to switch those off because as soon as your blueprint appears, they're going to try and weld it. And if you've got it in the wrong orientation, it might start making a bit of a mess. Next, I want to load up the blueprint. So we'll go back into K menu, find our projector. We'll scroll down to where it says blueprints and look for the blueprint that we want to work on and there it is there the first minor tutorial once i've selected that i can say copy to clipboard and you can hear by that sound you can just see behind there that it's appeared very rarely is a blueprint that you bring in the right way around it's often on its side it's it's upside down it's facing the wrong way it's not where you want it and that's the whole point of these hotbar settings as to how to fix that so i'm deliberately going to mess that up and i'll bring you back now in my experience this is typically what a blueprint looks like when you load it up in a projector if we jump out we can see it's the wrong way around it's facing down it's nowhere near the position that we want it so we need to fix that so we can start building it. So let's jump back into the seat and we'll go back to our hotbar. I want to be on hotbar two because I want to change the rotation of the, the ship first. It doesn't matter which is yaw, which is pan and so on. If we press the first button, we can see what it does. Just have a look. Two is rotating it round on its nose, if you like. So now I've got it facing that way. Three and four. That's flipped it completely upside down. So I press that back the other way. There it is. Now it's up the right way. Five and six I don't need to use because I've already got it fixed there. The problem now is that it's miles away from the projector and where I actually want to build it. So I'm going to change back to number one. I'm going to press one to see which way it goes because then I know two will go the other way. So one, I want to come over this way. So that's now leveled up with the center of the projector, which is great. I'm going to use three and four now. So three is bringing it down. So obviously four will take it up. And then next, I want it further away from me. I want to be building on the other side of that pillar. So let's try five, yep. And five's pushing it forwards. So therefore six will bring it back. So let me go forwards a little way and I'm going to jump out the seat and have a look and see whereabouts that is. That's not bad. I'm quite happy with that there. I'd be happy to build in that position. Now, the problem is we can't build blocks that are going to float in the midair. What we need to do is we need to have part of this projection touching the post here. So I'm going to do that by clicking four to bring up a block. And I'm going to place that where it's going to touch one of these thrusters in this case. Just like that. And you might have noticed there that this thruster suddenly went a lighter color, but you can, yeah, you can see there that that one's a lighter color. That means that that could be welded. So now we're ready to start welding. So bring up my welding tool and let's just see what happens. Now remember I am in creative mode, so this is welding up instantly. So now you can see the battery has gone the light color, which means that it can be welded. Let's do that. And now the landing gear has changed color and also the drill bit. So you can see the progression we've got here when they go to a light color, we can weld them. Now, because I'm using the build and repair system, all I could have done then at that point, once I placed that block there, would be just to turn on build and repair and it would build this for me. 
Now, the useful thing about the building repair is that it'll get inside to any little nooks and crannies and find things that you might have missed. So what happens if we're not using building repair and you're worried about missing blocks that are deep inside of the ship? Well, there's another method we can use here to weld this up. Let's put it back to the blueprint state. I'm going to go back into the K menu and go to the projector. And in the projector menu here, what I want to do is click on show only buildable. Let's have a look at what that's done. So you can see now we can't see the rest of the ship. We can only see this thruster. And the reason for that is because that thruster is the only part that can be built at the minute because it's touching this block. But as soon as we weld up that thruster, whatever else was attached to the thruster will appear, meaning that we can weld that. So let's start. There we go. Now we can see the thruster above it is weldable and also the battery which are both attached to that first thruster. So let's do that one. Now once we've done this battery, there's all sorts of other parts going to appear around here. Now the useful thing about this is that you can see the smallest components as they appear. So you have less chance of missing something while you're welding. So now there's our completed chip. What we need to do before we detach it and start using it is to jump into the seat and make sure that the thrusters are turned on. Now, incidentally, whatever settings you made in your hotbar in the ship just before you took the blueprint will remain in the blueprint. So I had set up my thrusters into hotbar number one and my drill into six and the landing gear in number nine there. It's remembered that. So if I press one now, I can turn on my thrusters and we can jump out and we can safely detach this block. And there we have it. Now what I would recommend doing is to turn on your thrusters before you actually create the blueprint because it will also remember the state that the engines and things are in as you take the blueprint. Now before I tell you this one last thing about projectors, I'd just like to say thanks very much to the new subscribers and thanks very much to all the people that have been enjoying these videos and liking them. Even one single like means a lot to me. I really do appreciate it. Now another thing you can do with projectors is you could attach one to your small grid ship or your large grid ship and you could have it projecting an image of the ship itself that you're flying in. So what that'll mean is that if a part of your ship becomes damaged and you have this projector turned on and you have the switch enabled for keep projection, whenever there is any damage to your ship, you'll be able to see a projected image of that component that is damaged. Now, if you're using something like the build and repair system, as you fly back to your base and you get within range of the build and repair, it'll automatically start repairing the ship for you. Now, this is really useful if you've got a miner and you've perhaps damaged a thruster while you've been mining, or if you're in a small fighter ship and you're in the middle of a battle, you can nip back to your base if it's close by and your nanites will repair the ship for you so you can head straight back to the action. That's obviously if you're using the build and repair system. Thanks again for watching this and I'll see you very soon back in Space Engineers. Bye-bye.